So here is the lemma. The dihedral angle between two of these mirror mirrors in a root system, i.e. between the faces of the vial chamber, um, can be Ninety degrees, sixty degrees, um, forty-five degrees, or thirty degrees, and nothing else. So I'll prove this lemma in another video. Um, it's not a difficult proof; it's actually a really nice proof. Uh, but what I want to do first is give you some examples of root systems which do have these dihedral angles just to see that they all occur. Okay, so here are my examples. This first one you can see there are four roots, these uh, black points, and there are two hyperplanes, two root hyperplanes in red. You can check this is a root system. It turns out this is the root system of SU2 times SU2. It's also the root system of SO4. Uh, but let's just think about the axioms of a root system. Um, every point has to have an opposite point. That works. Every point has to project orthogonally to a half integer multiple of a root. Well, let's see. If I project orthogonally onto this horizontal line through the roots, then this top root will just go to the origin. That's zero times the root. And there's the same, same with this bottom guy. Uh, and it's always going to be like that. So this is an example of a root system. And the angle is 90 degrees, so that's an example with 90 degree angle. Next one is the root system of SU3. We've already studied this in some detail, and the angle is 60 degrees. Next one is, in fact, the root system of SO5. Remember, SO5 has a two-dimensional maximal torus, so it has a two-dimensional root system. And um, so let's check it's a root system. Again, let's check that projecting a root onto another root line will give a half integer multiple. So let's project onto this horizontal line. Let's make it straight. Uh, if I project vertically onto this horizontal line, this long root here will just project onto this root. This vertical root here will project the origin and this root will project down to this root so they're all projecting to either one or zero times a root so that is in particular a half integer right half one is a half of two so this is a root system oh but what happens if we project onto this diagonal line so let me get rid of those green lines what happens if i project onto this line well this root will go to a half times the long root this guy will go to the origin and this short root will go on to a half times the long root. Again, a half is a half integer, so is zero. So um, that's fine. And that's the root system of SO5. Right, okay, what's next? Well, the next one is uh, a slightly funny looking root system called G2. So we haven't met this group yet. Um, it's one of the very small list of groups we haven't met. Uh, it's one of the exceptional Lie groups. So there are two kinds of root. There are the short roots and the long roots. And the angle between the short root and the closest long root is, is 30 degrees. So I tried to show here with these green lines that if you project orthogonally from the short root to a long root, you're gonna end up halfway along the line. And if you project orthogonally from a long root to a short root, you're going to end up three halves of a way along the line. So that that's a perfectly valid root system. So it'll turn out that these four are the only two-dimensional root systems. That will follow from the classification theorem we state at the end. Okay, so this is fine. Drawing pictures in two dimensions, making models in three dimensions, what happens if we want to understand a four-dimensional root system or an eight-dimensional root system? We run into some problems. 
But it turns out there's a very efficient way of encoding these diagrams, uh, just as a kind of graph. So this is called the Dinkin diagram or the Coxeter Dinkin diagram. So what do you do? Well, you pick your favorite vial chamber. So in these examples, you know, this would be a vial chamber. 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 And so the um, the boundary of the chamber uh, is given by n mirrors corresponding to simple roots. So what you do is you draw a dot for each mirror. And then you connect the dots and you connect them with zero edges if the angle between the mirrors, the dihedral angle, is 90 degrees. You connect them with one edge if the angle is 60 degrees. Two edges if the angle is 45 degrees. And three edges if the angle is 30 degrees. So the more edges, the smaller the dihedral angle. Finally, uh, we need to be able to distinguish between the mirrors orthogonal to long roots and the mirrors orthogonal to short roots. So we have to decorate this diagram a little bit. We add arrows from short roots to long roots. In other words, from the mirror orthogonal to a short root to the mirror orthogonal to a long root. So let's just do these examples that we've seen. So here, here's the first three. Um, in this case, we've got two mirrors, so two dots. They make a 90 degree angle, so there's no edges. So this is the dinking diagram, just two dots. This next example, again, we have two mirrors at the boundary of the vial chamber. The angle is 60 degrees, so we draw two dots and one edge. This example, we have two dots again. The number of dots is always going to be the same as the dimension of the space we're working in, so it's always going to be two for these planar root systems. And the angle here is 45 degrees, so we put two edges, and now uh, let's think about this. This mirror here is orthogonal to this short root. This mirror here is orthogonal to this long root. So those are our simple roots. Uh, so uh, actually this diagram is completely symmetric. It doesn't really matter. But we put an arrow from the mirror corresponding to the short root to the mirror corresponding to the long root. And we get this diagram. So here's the last example, G2. Again, the vial chamber has two mirrors on the boundary. And actually, let me do one in red and one in blue, because that's what I've colored the mirrors. It doesn't really matter. This is just for your benefit. It's not part of the data. So the red mirror is orthogonal to the long root. So the arrow is gonna go from the blue to the red. And how many arrows, or how many edges do we put here? We put three because the angle is 30 degrees. Okay, so this is the Dinkin diagram of G2. I could have drawn it the other way around. It completely, you know, doesn't matter where about you draw these vertices. Um, this is the Dinkin diagram of SO5, the Dinkin diagram of SU3, and the Dinkin diagram of SO4 or SU2 times SU2. Okay, one more example, the three-dimensional example that I gave you um, in real life uh, had two mirrors that were at 60 degrees to one another, 
and then another mirror that was at 60 degrees to one of them and at 90 degrees to the other so this was the Dinkin diagram for the sort of 3D example I showed you Okay, I'm just going to state the classification theorem now for the uh, Dinkin diagrams of uh, root systems. So here we go. If R is the root system of a compact semi-simple Lie group, then the Dinkin diagram of R is a disjoint union of diagrams from the following list. So first, a comment about disjoint union. These diagrams are all going to be connected Dinkin diagrams. Uh, but we've seen you can have disconnected Dinkin diagrams where you just take a couple of Dinkin diagrams to stick them together with no edges between, like this one. That corresponds to taking the product of the corresponding Lie algebras, like SU2 times SU2. So you can always do that, so we're just going to focus on the, uh, the connected guys. So what do we have here? We have four infinite families of Dinkin diagrams, and then we have five exceptional cases. So these first four guys correspond to the so-called classical groups that people have known about for a long time, and these five correspond to uh, groups that were discovered basically as part of trying to classify the groups. So people realized that you, you had these possibilities and then they constructed groups to fit them. They're not very easy to write down. I also want to stress again, just before discussing these diagrams, this is a classification of Lie algebras up to isomorphism, not of groups, because you can have two groups that have the same Lie algebra, but the groups are not isomorphic. Okay, let's look at these diagrams. So the first infinite sequence is called AN. The subscript here is always the number of dots in the diagram. So you put n dots in a row and connect the first to the second, second to the third, etc. with one edge each. So we've already seen two of these. Uh, the first one was SU3 and the second uh, turns out to be SU4. And in general, this will give you the Lie algebra of SU n minus uh, one. No, sorry, n plus one. Um, so SU2, you just need one mirror uh, so that's just one dot. That is one of these, uh, one of these ANs. That's A one. Okay. Next infinite sequence is called BN. This corresponds to the odd-dimensional rotation groups. Again, there's n dots, almost the same except the last two are connected by two arrows and the there's two edges, and you have to put an arrow to tell which is the longer or shorter root. So the arrow goes from the penultimate dot to the final dot. That means that the final dot corresponds to a longer simple root. CN is exactly the same except the arrow goes the other way. And that corresponds to a family of groups called the symplectic groups SPN, which we haven't discussed in this course so far. We'll do an uh, exercise about these. Um, finally, DN is uh, the last infinite sequence. Again, we have one, two, three, four, up to N minus two dots in a row and then we have two guys coming off the n minus second dot. Uh, so that's the Dinkin diagram of SO2n, the even dimensional rotation groups. Then we have these five exceptional cases. So there's E6, E7, E8. That's six dots, five in a row and one coming off the uh, third dot in a row. E7 is six dots in a row, one coming off the third dot, and E8 is seven dots in a row, one coming off the third dot. It kind of looks like it should be an infinite family, but it turns out that the E9 diagram doesn't correspond to uh, a root system. What's next? F4, it's got four dots uh, connected, one to two, two to three, three to four, but two to three is a double arrow. 
and G2 we've already seen is, is uh, two dots connected by three arrows. Okay, so it's kind of surprising, right, that we've been studying this big class of groups, Lie groups, and actually the examples we've been studying is almost everything. Right, there's one more infinite family and five exceptional cases that we would never have dreamed of, um, and that's it, and maybe products of these guys. I just want to finish by saying how amazingly economical this diagram is, this dinking diagram. Right, look at this E8 diagram, right? It's eight dots and some lines. What information is that encoding? Well, it's a recipe for building a configuration of mirrors in eight dimensions. It's eight seven-dimensional mirrors in eight dimensions, and this is telling you what angles to put them at to get this root system. That's an incredible compression of information. There's no way we can actually draw that or build that configuration of mirrors. Um, so these, these Dinkin diagrams are incredibly uh, effective at encoding information about the algebras. Okay, so in what remains of the course, we'll try and fill in some of the details of this proof.